And we're very excited today because you know what? It's Fridays at the Fort, and they're always a lot of fun for us here on Sonoran Living Live. And today is certainly no exception. Fort McDowell Casino is owned and operated by the Yavapai Nation. Today, they have a 900 plus member tribe, and they're a multi million dollar enterprise. But it wasn't always that way. They have had to fight for their success, and they continue to strive for independence. Joining us this morning, Treasurer Pamela Mott from the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation is joining us this morning. And welcome, Pamela. It's so good to have you on our show. Thank you for having me here. Oh, Love I am here. I am very excited. I, I wish we had a whole show just to talk about <laughs> the Yavapai Nation and its history. But mm -hmm. just give us a little idea. When was the Yavapai Nation first founded? Well, um, we became a reservation in September 15, 1903, by executive order by President Roosevelt. But we've always lived there, so I don't think we were founded. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Now, let's talk about, uh, you've had to, I said earlier, your successes and, and, your, and the strive for your successes. Mm -hmm. has, this, this has not been an easy task for the Avapai Nation. Um, take us back to, uh, uh, those of us who have lived in Arizona for a, a while remember the incident with Orm Dam um, and your fight for that. One of your biggest successes as a nation. Oh, yes. Um, Orm Dam started early in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And through the late 80s, we finally won victory um, for the federal government, telling us that we will keep our lands. If we weren't able to keep our lands, they would have built a dam. It would have completely covered the whole Fort McDowell Yavabation Reservation. And we would have been um, homeless, would have had no home to go to, and they would relocate us. So um, we fought hard. We won. And um, today we have successful enterprises because we are able to fight and keep our land. Yeah. And you were 17 at the time that mm -hmm. happened. And you, you remember actually walking and marching and fighting as a young girl. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, you think about your home going to be taken away. Sure. and you know, one day, because at that time, I didn't think I was going to be a mother and have grandchildren. And today, I today I am a mother and I have grandchildren. And yeah. now they have a home to, to live at and always live there and, you know, be successful as a Yabba Pai person. Yes. And, 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 and the fight didn't stop there. Um, next came the opportunity um, for the Yabba Pai tribe to build a, a bingo hall yeah. on the reservation, mm -hmm. which turned into some gambling. And apparently the government didn't take too kindly to that. What happened? Um, no. And I guess on May 12, 1992, they um, they wanted to take gaming away from um, the tribes, and they actually showed up in Fort McDowell. Um, several casinos had their um, machines taken away, and in the way early hours in the morning, they showed up but to take the machines from Fort McDowell um, Casino that we had, our little bingo that started off. And apparently, um, they went to the wrong place t the first time. They went to the sand and gravel operation. Which and is how you guys found out, yeah. and that's how you got tipped off. Yeah, and then the manager at the time got a hold of the tribal council, and they got a hold of the people, and we did a blockade, and that's how we had all the heavy equipment machinery. We had tribal members out there, um, young children, Look, women, We're, we're looking at actually, this is actual video yeah. of, of that particular raid. And your entire community, you were working at the gravel operation at that time. And all the trucks, they sent all the trucks out to block the road. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they, they couldn't leave, and we wouldn't leave. And everybody stood there. And, and there was actually a human chain. People were holding hands to blockade along with the heavy equipment. Wow. And I, I, I know that this turned into a huge ordeal, and you had to continue to fight. Um, and, and clearly, you won. And we're talking yeah. 30 years ago, the casino was built. Can you believe it's been 30 years? Um, yes, yes. <laughs> I haven't seen it. wasn't that long. But yeah, and you wow. know, just Fort McDowell doing that, we also opened the ways for other tribes to get a compact with the state. So now you have other tribes that have gaming available to them to make their tribal nations, you know, um, successful with the enterprises. And it's big business now. I mean, you guys look at this. The, the Radisson there is mm -hmm. next to the casino. Um, you've, you have golf courses. Tell us about the, you call it an enterprise. Tell us about the enterprise today. Well, we have several. Um, the golf course is beautiful. If you go out there, we have two championship golf courses. And our Radisson, it's a beautiful building, to um, a beautiful hotel to stay at, the casino. We have a gas station. We have a farm. 
We have Fort McDowell Adventures. You can go to get horseback rides. We, the tribe, the tribal Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation also owns a beautiful resort in Sedona. It's called Poco Diablo. Oh, yes, yes. So, and we have the Yavapai materials, which is still running and still able to go out and um, supply material to many construction sites. So the tribe has become very successful. And with these enterprises comes jobs, not only for the tribal nation, but you know, communities outside Fort McDowell, other people can work and come to work for the for the nation. Yes, strive and thrive and grow, mm -hmm. which is what your tribe has done. And Treasurer Pamela Mott, thank you so much for being a part and, and uh, giving us a little taste of uh, Yavapai Nation's history and successes. We certainly appreciate that. Well, and also part of Native American culture is the dancing. <laughs> My goodness, you, I'm just, I have goosebumps right now. You are amazing. This is so exciting for us here on Sonoran Living Live. We have Gwen Bahi, who I know I've had a chance to talk with so many times from Fort McDowell Casino. And joining us is the Native Trails Dance Group. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you Thank so you much for being Thank here. Gwen, much. tell us about some of the traditions. <laughs> I, I, first of all, I, we have so many beautiful costuming yeah. going on here. Tell us about what the Native Trails okay, Dance Group Okay, Terry, does. we're very fortunate to have different tribes represented today. As you can see, our dancer represents the northern traditional type of dan dancing, along with the actual songs that you heard. Those are northern songs. There are different uh, styles of dancing. This is just one of the many. Each tribe is unique mm. when they do their dancing. So this is just one portion and one type. So when the different tribes come together, as they have, mm -hmm. um, how do they, do they do certain types, specific tribal music for each dance, or do they do a combination? Are there combos? Well, usually when they say intertribal, intertribal oh. means all the tribes gather together and dance to the same songs. There's a, a special songs for certain types of dances, and each dancer is well educated and know exactly the different types of songs to dance to. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let you guys take over and tell us, um, is there a specific dance that he's going to do for us right now? Right now, I think he's just doing the traditional, northern traditional type of contest dancing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we will okay. let them take okay. it away. Okay. <laughs> 